What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. In today's episode, we're out here, it is snowing, it is raining, and it is a great day to be in the garden. Because, well, let's face it, it's the new year. And in the new year, we talk about New Year's plans, New Year's resolutions, and every year we come up with kind of a, a word, a word of the year that kind of defines how, it kind of defines the course of what we're going to take in the new year. And this year, we came up with a word and the word is nostalgia. So when I think of the word nostalgia, the word that I associate nostalgia with is corn. I absolutely loved corn as a kid growing up. We'd go pick corn uh, with my grandpa, my mom. We'd go harvest sweet corn, and we'd have corn roasts. It was a lot of fun, and for me, you know, growing up in a farming community and being a part of a farming community, sweet corn and corn is such an integral part of agriculture. And about four years ago or so, maybe five years ago, we planted sweet corn, actually in this bed right here. And I'll see if we can find a clip of it. And it was beautiful. There's something to me that is so quintessential about a garden that when you have corn in like an urban setting, Everyone drives by and it, it, it looks it looks different. It's kind of like when you throw a spice into a dish that is kind of a secret recipe. And people always say, there's something, there's something, but I can't put my finger on it. Well, there's something about corn in an urban garden that you can't quite put your finger on, but it feels right. And so for me, I want to have nostalgia. And so this year we're going to be planting sweet corn. I'm not going to be planting in this bed. I don't know where I'm gonna be planting it, but it's gonna be in our garden. No, another thing that I think of when I think of nostalgia is I think of when I very first started gardening. When I very first started gardening, one, one of my favorite things to do was to grow lettuce. Lettuce was one of my favorite crops to grow. And I really want, in the years past, I've really dialed back our lettuce quite a bit. But this year, because I'm thinking about nostalgia, one of my favorite things to do was to plant out an entire bed of lettuce. And you can actually go back and see videos of me planting entire beds of lettuce. Now, I'm not gonna plant head lettuce like I used to because I just don't like how wasteful of space it is. I like growing a ton of food in a smaller area. And I like being able to give to others that don't have what we have. So I will occasionally take food to the soup kitchen or just cut it off, you know, chop and drop uh, some lettuce and, or cut and come again lettuce, I should say and give it to neighbors and friends and coworkers. And so what we're gonna do this year is we are absolutely gonna plant out an entire bed of lettuce, just in honor of where, kind of an homage to where the channel even began. And that began with a whole bed of lettuce. So another thing that's very nostalgic for me is strawberry picking. Growing up as a kid, again, farming community, my mom and I, even my grandparents, strawberry jam was a thing that was like, it was a requirement. You did not go a season without June bringing strawberry jam, you pick strawberry patches. And for years, we've had two beds here of strawberries. And we've really kind of not planted strawberries, not because we haven't wanted them, but just because every year we get around to it, we start a little too late. And so this year, I'm not gonna create any excuses. We are gonna have our strawberry beds back. And I'm so excited about it because this bed right here has garlic in it. And that's fine because garlic can stay in this bed, but I'm gonna plant out strawberries in this bed and then probably the bed behind you. And I'm gonna plant out strawberries in two beds. And we are going to have a strawberry, uh, strawberry patch again because one of the things that I enjoyed, though it is not the most efficient on space, I get it. Strawberries can yield a ton, but the season is very short. It's a lot like asparagus. They're like these spring treats. You, you last all winter long and you freeze your butt off and you go through four or five months of absolute misery. And then when spring breaks, it is like this gift. And I love the taste of the gift of asparagus and strawberries and things. And so I want to have strawberries again to just kind of, to, for, even for my kids' sake, for my sake, and so that you guys can see strawberries growing. I'm going to have strawberries in this bed. I'm excited about it. So that's another thing that thinking about nostalgia, that's what we're putting in the garden next year, or this year actually. <laughs> now another thing that is very nostalgic for me is tomatoes, and not just any tomatoes. We're talking heirloom beautiful tomatoes. Now, you know that every year I do plant heirlooms, and I do plant a lot of beautiful tomatoes, but I wanna go back to some of the very first varieties that I fell in love with. 
every year we kind of trial new varieties, we see what we like, we plant a lot of what we do like, and then we kind of, we designate a certain amount of space in our garden, about 10%. I always recommend about 10% being designated to the kind of the what if. What if I happen to love them? What if they happen to, to produce better than the other plants I have in my garden? What if they happen to be more disease resistant? The what ifs are still good to have, but I'm really gonna focus on where I want my heartbeat to be this year, which is nostalgia. I don't know why I'm in a very nostalgic mood, but I am. And so I'm gonna plant some of the, my most favorite varieties of tomatoes that I grew up with. We're gonna be growing varieties like Abraham Lincoln. That was a variety that my grandpa grew, ha always had in his garden, always. We're gonna be uh, growing uh, the Bonnie Best tomato. It's one of the first varieties of tomatoes that I actually grew as a kid. It was the first tomato that I was able to take care of. My mom, it was one of my mom's favorite varieties. We put them in some pots, we had them on our patio, and I absolutely loved them. They were a determinant. So we're gonna figure that out. Maybe I'll put them at the end, I don't know. We'll figure that out but I'm not gonna not plant them. I want them in my garden this year. And I'm also gonna plant things like the Ace 55. I'm gonna plant the yellow pear. I'm gonna plant the red pear. The varieties that I really, that I, that I was introduced to. Because when I first started gardening, heirlooms were a thing that weren't really all the rage. They existed. They were probably more, more around than they are even today. Because we've, as we get progressing with agriculture, we become more and more dependent on, on hybrids to kind of scratch that itch that we're looking for with productivity or disease resistance or drought tolerance. And the, the, the heirlooms kind of get pushed to the wayside. But there's been such a resurgence in heirlooms and a love for heirlooms that um, back in the day, they weren't all, they, there wasn't as many varieties as there are right now that are commercially available. And so when I first got introduced to heirlooms, it just was like, I was like, wow, the idea that this, this this variety has been grown for, for decades, if not hundreds of years, is so cool. And so we're gonna grow those varieties this year. That's just a small sampling of some of the varieties. When we actually get seed starting, I'm gonna talk about so many more than that, but I'm just so excited about it. We're, we always plant out two beds of tomatoes. So we're gonna plant out about 32 plants total, 16 beds per plant. And so we're gonna have 32 plants that we're gonna be able to, uh, to, uh, to plant out. And so we're gonna have about 16 varieties of heirloom tomatoes, and they're all gonna be super nostalgic. I'm excited about it. Whew. Gotta get the blood flowing. It's freezing, you guys. Hit those like buttons because, man, it is so cold. All right, so what we're gonna be doing here in this bed is we're gonna be planting bush beans. Now, you guys know that I have a special place in my heart for bush beans. Every year I plant them. I love how productive they are. And I always say that bush beans are probably one of those crops that if you're starting out gardening, not only are they low maintenance, but they are so unbelievably productive that you're gonna be able to get a huge harvest from even a small area. And it's wonderful for beginning gardeners, even for advanced gardeners, but it's wonderful for beginning gardeners to be like, I grew that. Didn't even have to do that much work, but I grew that and it's producing a lot of food for me. And that is so fun. But I grew up planting out huge areas of bush beans. And I can recall many summers where I spent hours might sound bad, but I loved it. I spent hours harvesting huge clusters of bush beans from rows and rows of bush beans. Back at our cottage garden, we have videos on that. In our cottage garden, we planted, I think about two 75 foot rows, so about 150 linear feet of bush beans. And that was absolutely insane. We were harvesting bushel baskets full of green beans, bushel baskets full. And the thing that I really enjoy about bush beans, I enjoy a lot about them. And it seems weird because it seems like I'm like, you know, fantasizing about bush beans, but in a way I kind of do. I think what I really enjoy about them, their texture is so unique. When you first harvest them, they're either very smooth, like a slenderette, like a French filet bean, or they're kind of fuzzy. And that kind of fuzziness is so, it, it, texturally it's fun to harvest. I don't know what it is about it. Don't judge me. It's just really interesting. I also love, there's something so for me, nostalgic about combining butter beans, like the, the yellow beans, the wax beans, and green beans. I grew up on what they call a like a, 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 like a bicolored bean mix. Every time we'd ever have something like Thanksgiving or Christmas, anytime we ever got together for, uh, for, for a family gathering, there was always a two colored bean mix on the table, always, without fail. And it was just because that's what they grew they combined it all, 
and then they they you know they froze it in one bag and then when you served it it was all there and it was the texture and the color was so beautiful it was so nostalgic and i personally love it and so not only the fact that i love it but it's also nostalgic is why we're going to plant out a nice full bed of beans i think we're going to do probably half bush beans we'll pick different varieties we'll do half half uh green beans i should say and then half uh yellow wax beans really pumped about it i think it's gonna be good so one of the final things, and there's lots more we're gonna be planting, and obviously it's all gonna be themed around nostalgia. And we'll kind of explain things as we go, but I wanna get out of the rain here. Camera's not waterproof, neither am I. So <laughs> you guys are comfortable in your house. We're the ones freezing our butts off. So you better have hit that like button for us because it helps spread these videos around to more garden nerds like yourself. So uh, one thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna plant a pumpkin patch. Now you guys know that pumpkins for me are very nostalgic. If you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you'll know that I actually got my start and my love for gardening planting up pumpkins. When I was about seven, eight years old, my parents said, okay, Luke, well, if you wanna earn some money, that's fine. You could plant out a pumpkin patch and sell the pumpkins. I was always, I was a hustler. I was always looking for side money. I'll tell you, my parents growing up, we were very, you know, we were not well off. We were very humble. We did not have all the frills. And so, you know, money was, money was hard to come by. We were not, we were not rich by, any stretch of the imagination. We were rich in memories, rich in love, we were rich in family, not in money. And so anytime money was a question, it was like, go out and rake leaves for the neighbor. Let's see, you know, earn some money. Go pick up cans on the side of the road. Or in a lot of cases it was, okay, we could plant some pumpkins at your grandpa's house, harvest those pumpkins and sell them at the road. We could, uh, you know, grow tomatoes and sell them at the road. I was known in our town as the tomato guy because I had a tomato, I had literally had a tomato stand at our house and I'd grow tomatoes and sell them at the road. And so pumpkins was something I got started with. When I was like seven years old, I had Luke's pumpkin stand. That was the sign, that was the name. I was not creative, but I was really excited about it. And so I wanna grow some pumpkins, not only for the fact of nostalgia, but I, kids absolutely love them. Not only is, is Enzo starting to be able to walk now, he's getting excited about the garden, which is wonderful. But then uh, Geneva, she is just, she's so, in love with the garden and I couldn't be happier as a dad. And so uh, I wanna grow a pumpkin patch for them as well as for nostalgia's sake for us. I just don't know where I'm gonna put it yet. I may put it in ground and let them trellis throughout, the, throughout maybe the orchard or something, but uh, I don't know. But pumpkins will absolutely be somewhere in the MI Gardener garden for 2024. So it's starting to rain harder. The snow has transitioned to rain and that means we've got to get out of the rain. So we got a lot more uh, content coming out. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. If this uh, was something that you enjoyed or something that you found fun or informative or maybe you resonated with some of this, let me know in the comments box down below what your plans are for the garden and some of the nostalgic things from your childhood or your gardens in the past that you might want to bring back in, uh, in this year's garden. So I hope you guys enjoyed. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel, reminding you to grow bigger. Take care, bye.